Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Are you serious? Are you serious? I mean, I don't know how many times I got to say that. Are you serious in this show? Because that's really the truth, folks. This is a show like none other. And Steve Quayle is going to be joining us in a few minutes. It's incredible. I, 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 I've never, ever seen anything like this. We're going to show you artifact that was found by Steve Quayle and his team that has not been seen ever in eight, I think he said between six and 8,000 years. We'll let him clarify that. But it has been discovered in Mexico. It's, it literally is unbelievable. It shows the connection of aliens with the Egyptian pharaohs, the connection, and they found it where? In Mexico. So it's tied in with the Americas. So we're talking about a global, when you talk about fallen angels, when you talk about alien interacting, interactions with humans, we got proof. This, is the big, this might be the biggest find in the history of the world, to be quite honest with you. And boy, I'd like to know how they're going to explain this away uh, on some of those other networks out there that have been preaching this Darwinism theory when this backs the Bible right out of Genesis chapter 6. No question. I'm going to quit talking. Let's do this. Let me first put a quick shout out because I got to do this as I was promised. Noblegoldinvestment.com. That's www.noblegoldinvestment.com. Guys, if your 401k is eroding, guess what? It's because the hyperinflation today is 9.1%, the highest in, since 1981. Inflation of, we're now, we're now the inflation nation. And Joe Biden has no clue. And so what are you going to do? I'm going to recommend you go to noblegoldinvestment.com. That's www.noblegoldinvestment.com. Or call them on the phone tomorrow at, or today at 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. And tell them Pastor Paul Begley sent you there. Now, folks, what we're going to do in the next five minutes, we're going to show you a trailer of an upcoming webinar that Steve Quayle is putting on along with, I think, Doug Hagman. It is incredible. We'll give you the links today on how you can get your tickets. It's, this is a must-watch webinar. I, I'm, I promise you, I'm, I can't wait till it starts. And, then, and also, Steve Quayle is going to join us later in late August for our webinar to talk about this. But boy, everybody's got to go to Steve Quayle's webinar on this. Let's go now to the trailer. Check this out. If you don't believe me, Brock, start at the beginning. And here we go. Five minutes. For the first time in more than 50 years, Congress held a hearing on unidentified flying objects. Military leaders now admit there are objects flying around out there that they can't explain. I do not have an explanation for what this uh, object is. Uh, reportedly appear to exhibit unusual flight characteristics, appear to demonstrate advanced technology, and maneuver abruptly or move at considerable speed without discernible means of propulsion. That's pretty intriguing. Videos which add fuel to the belief that we are not alone. Defense officials testifying that there were at least 18 cases where they had data from multiple sensors showing objects that moved in ways that could not be explained, adding they would share more details during a closed door classified setting. How do you prevent leaks of potentially classified videos or other material? We will have a uh, a process for classified and compartment holdings and we will find a way of getting positive control over those. So no bombshell evidence or any real answers today. The aerial phenomena observed in these videos, they say, remain characterized as unidentified. Despite a 1500 page report on UFOs released in 2021, the bona fide history about alien interaction with mankind is still being hidden. Gen 6 Productions has embarked on one of the most ambitious archaeological expeditions in history. 
searching for evidence of alien interactions dating back to the peak of ancient Egyptian and Aztec civilizations. This is quarried stone. So this gives us a clear indication this is not recent. Within the layers of the untouched Mexican soil lie stunning ancient alien artifacts and evidence of historical relationships that governments around the world would rather have hidden. There's a lot of uh, National Guard patrolling the area and what we don't want to do is get any unwanted attention from anybody. The question is, why are they covering up these connections? Using advanced ground-penetrating radar and documenting on film every step of the way, our team establishes providence and uncovers the undeniable truth a pyramid, bro. of direct interaction between ancient Egyptians, Aztecs, elongated skull, and aliens. Straight alien with an exoskeleton. The precursor to the Aztecs were the Toltecs who occupied the basin of Mexico for thousands of years. Gen 6's newest expedition concentrates on the Tula region of Mexico around the area of the Toltecs buried ancient temple. 75% of the Toltec capital is still beneath the ground. Some of the artifacts found by our team are thousands of years old. This is a direct contradiction to the public narrative. We have 11 different types of geopenetrating radars to complement each other. That way nothing is missed. Not only have the authorities, politicians and scientists known about this Egyptian connection to the Aztecs and aliens, but they have gone out of their way to cover up this information. I mean, it's definitely Egyptian iconography, that's for sure. Let's keep going. What could be their reasoning for withholding these facts? And why would institutions like the Smithsonian be so interested in collecting and hiding tens of thousands of artifacts? The mind-blowing Egyptian alien connections in the Americas will expose the greatest cover-up of true ancient history. All right. Uh, this is stunning, folks. Stunning. Brock, I've got this phone, and this is not the phone I need for Steve. Can you believe this? Steve, can you call this other number? Sure. Let, uh, me, tell me. let me uh, text it to you, right? Give me a second. Uh, one second. I can't believe this. Let me write your number down real fast. Hang on, everybody. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, I'm speechless when I'm looking at this. Hang on, everybody. We'll get Steve Quill on here. It's my fault. I'm hanging up, Steve. I'm calling you with the, uh, calling you with a different number, okay? Thank you. Okay. Let's call him right back and get him on this line. This is the talking line. Uh, ha, ha, na, na, na. Paul Begley Technology at its finest hour. But it all good things come to those that wait, okay? All right, Steve, let's get you on there. All right, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, Brock, turn him up. Can you hear me now? Turn him up, Brock. Way up. Yeah, way up. I can't hear, I can't hear Steve. I need to hear him. And the people on, I just want to make sure I got to hear him. And... And I think can the people hear, can. can hear me? I barely hear you. He's turning you up right now. Okay. I got my volume up. I'll just 
far yeah. Okay. All right, Steve. Yes, sir. How, can they hear him? Can you guys hear him on television? Still says low. They said I can hear him. See if you can go a little higher, Brock. Is there anything in there you can do? Why is this not going out louder? Boy, the devil must not want this. Must not want this broadcast out. That's for sure. Testing, Steve. Oh, if, I told, if I told you what's, can you hear me now? I hear you. Yes, they hear you. Um, Brock, it's got to be something in there because you got that cranked. But when you do, don't blow me away. Uh, so hang on one second, Steve. Let's get this volume. I want everybody to hear everything he says. I don't want any, any problem. Try it again, Steve. Okay, can you hear me now? Was it better? On there, the there it is. Brock, whatever you did. Say it again, Steve. Okay, it's better? Yes, now we've got you. I don't know what was there, but Brock turned a knob in there and it works. All right. Folks, Steve Quayle's with us today. Steve Quayle is with us today. And uh, Steve, that first of all, that trailer is better than anything I've ever seen. Just the trailer. Just those guys and, and the artifacts. And I mean, I saw aliens uh, without question, don't turn too low. I, I've got aliens out there that just I saw that's just incredible. Well, Pastor, and, and, and I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Okay. okay. Uh, what you're seeing is the, uh, I guess you'd say, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> this is really, a, I, I'm hearing all your talk in the background, but so it. Can you hear me now? Yes. We hear you loud and clear. Everybody hears you loud and clear. Okay. That's not the issue. I can't. I'm, I'm hearing you guys and all kinds of distortion feeding back on my phone. So I'm going to have to hold it. But to answer your question, people, you're seeing today on this show some of the artifacts that my team's been working on expedition for the last three years in central Mexico in a 500-mile radius of Mexico City. The specific artifacts that we dug up in real time, all establishing the authenticity and the provenance with drones, our drones, had our people in the field, all of it being dug in real time is un it's basically you can't, they can't, they, they will try, but they can't deny it because, again, the fact is, is that the greatest cover up and cover over of history has been the fallen angel, not the Anunnaki, the fallen angels. The Anunnaki was just a term that basically Sumerian uh, legend came out with and to take away from the biblical reality of the Genesis 6 4 narrative. And also, we know biblically, biblically, that a third of the angels rebelled against God and came to earth with a specific number of them, not all of them having sex with earth women and producing the mighty men of old or the giants pro prior to the fall and after the fall. In other words, there were giants in those days and after those days. Most people say, well, what is, what is the Bible talking about? It's talking about the genetic corruption of the human race from the get-go. And what we have done is, is uh, by the grace of God, uh, just been following the scriptures lead. See, the reason most people don't want to discuss this outside of a fallen aliens, or excuse me, aliens versus fallen angels is because it proves the validity of the word of God, the Bible. And I, I mean, I'm getting all kinds of uh, AI programs from U.S. military, from the intelligence agencies saying I'm crazy. I don't know what I'm talking about. One guy from the Pentagon was honest enough to tell a certain friend of mine, he says, man, when he gets a hold of something, he doesn't let go, talking <laughs> about me. And I yeah. give the glory to God because it's absolutely, um, how should I say this? This is the biggest secrets in the world, you guys. The trailer opens with obviously the UAP, the Navy footage of you know the F-18 fighter pilots encountering all these 
object. I can tell you point blank that we're turning up stuff that goes back even to the time that and there were no humans before the creation of Adam and Eve. I want everybody to understand. I'm a biblical creationist, Adam and Eve forward. But there's a time period where the civilization of fallen angels, no human beings existed. And God judged that group of fallen angels, too. And whether they fell at that time, but it was over genetic manipulation, Pastor. Yeah. And so the myths, legends, and everything. I want everybody to make, I'm going to talk about two periods. What we're talking about right now are the Egyptians and the Americas. And in both South, Latin, I'm sorry, both South, Latin, and North America, but throughout the world. But I'm just focusing on this right now because we have the access to get into private farmers and private landowners land that's really critical we wow. robbed no national treasuries we went on no state land. we didn't do anything but god was so gracious now the man you see leading the expedition is jesse g uh full scale mexican but he's probably one of the and I, this isn't flattery but one of the brightest men i've ever met when it comes to antiquity ancient stuff and what i'm going to share with you today is just astonishing because how, where, and how else can anybody account for artifacts and these relics that are turning up with DNA symbols on them? We okay? need to show them, Steve, the picture you yep. sent us. This Now, this is an artifact that you've got your hands on now, your team, that is how old is this now, Steve? Right now, and, and I'll tell you what, it's dated between six and 8,000 years old, and I'll tell you the story, okay? That's an alien. I'm looking right now at it. Now, folks, yep. Steve told me this, this thing's about two foot in diameter, about 24 inches yep. in diameter. Look right and there. He, look at the alien with the wings. If you look right straight ahead, folks, you see it. You see the alien. He's got an alien eyes right there, head. Yet he's got like a snake body and he's got wings. Uh, unbelievable. And then look up there at the uh, higher, Brock. See that one? Look at that elongated skull on an Egyptian looking uh figure and there's other aliens i see another one to the right of there brock look there there's another alien with wings he's kind of crouched over they're all over this place and it looks like saturn is on there steve this your your guys your guys people found this this is your guys's unbelievable discovery and this is six to eight thousand years ago so this would have been the time uh before genesis 6 even or somewhere yes. close to that Right. Very close to that. And then also uh, what's interesting, and I want to start out right now, if we could have Brock put up the article that I sent to you guys to show that one year before we broke this news, a scientific team in Switzerland was examining the DNA of nine pharaohs. Eight of those pharaohs had human DNA. The other one that basically they discovered had alien demon, uh, alien demon probably the same thing, alien DNA. And what was interesting about this, Paul, is the fact that the scientific study there, they in, within the article, if you can hold it up or Brock can put it up, uh, basically, you know, it's a pretty telling thing. New, and, and hold it up, so, yeah, new D DNA study reveals that Egyptian pharaoh uh, Amenhotep IV was a human alien hybrid. What? Now, ladies and gentlemen, yes, that's what that, that's what says in the article. But I didn't need the article to uh, come to that conclusion because, ladies and gentlemen, in this webinar you're going to see, and I'm, I'm saying this for grown-ups, this is not for children, please. Although, you know, I mean, just not because we have the alien, what I would call, and it's not erotic, but it's disgusting. We're showing aliens having sex with uh, with women and producing hybridized, you know, exoskeletonized monster looking things. What's critical, what's critical for people to understand is that the thing that Lucifer hates more than any, excuse me, let me take a sip of water. Let's look at that again, Brock. Show us that artifact again while Steve's getting some water here. It's an incredible, yeah. uh, again, when you look at this artifact, uh and and detail of it it's first of all it's miraculous that something could be this old and look this good and what is That's that on the, yeah. is that stone steve is that stone yes it's on stone but i want people to understand something that you know these things people say oh they're in too good a shape you will watch 
in this webinar the stuff he initially initiated in the finding identified on the ground penetrating radar or what's called the geo radars and then digging away down to the eight foot below the surface of the ground level and this is in the area of uh, Tula, T-U-L-A, Mexico and what's important that people really understand is you're watching this stuff being dug off and in the desert sand this is why mummies are preserved it's the condition of this stuff doesn't come out looking like that we 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 brush it and and, and wash it. we don't do anything to the imagery but there's another image i want brock if you'll put up the hagman uh sign up site i want to show people that image that's on that it's really critical and because these aliens have exoskeletons that's the wrong one brock you, you, you've got you've got steve quail's website you have to pull up hagman's hagman the, probably the last one i sent you well, anyway, I'll continue on. Yeah, there's but, the Hagman Report. Folks, if you go right there on that ticker, if you go to www.hagmanreport.com, that's where you get your tickets. That's where you get your tickets. Uh, right there, the Egyptian alien connections with the Americans. That's where you want to get your ticket for this. There's, Paul, when people sign up for this, they get uh, a, close to a 200-page PDF with photographs and the narrative and not only that but they will get the entire if you will interview with jesse who's the team leader and by the way this is in the heart of the most dangerous part of mexico when my film guy landed there my my, my film crew landed to basically be taken to this area he called me he said steve there were 11 people murdered just down the street from me last night i said i said to him uh, you know i won't use his name but i said be at peace the Lord is in this, and you know, I mean, these guys have. Let's just say that these guys aren't your typical uh, uh, armchair heroes that wouldn't step out of their basement because they might get bit by a mosquito. <laughs> so they're right in the heart of uh, you know hell, literally. And the thing that's important that everybody needs to understand that this webinar is exclusive. We're not going to just throw these images up like I, the one I just had. Pastor Paul, no one has seen that yet. No. And so there's there's a whole bunch of this stuff. And the ones with the uh, DNA on them are critical. Now, if, if, if you, the reason I want the Hagman... Uh, Put the Hagman up, Rock, you got yeah, it there. You I want to show you the alien that we got, and it's in the... Okay, now if you would, uh, uh, Brock. go down, Brock, you know, keep going down. I'm sorry, now, yeah, I need the link to the page where it says... You know, um, oh, I'm sorry. This mini conference where it says L click here. Yes. Okay, Brock, you see it there to see the little button over on the right? Boom. Click here, right there. Click. Yep. Okay. okay, now scroll down. That's it, Brock. And look at this creature on the left. What? And Brock, are you, yeah, we dug this one up. I guess the correct term is unearthed it in real time. Everybody will see the digging, the step ladder down into the hole, you know, and Brock, if you could blow that up, uh, just the, the alien over here on the left side. He'll do it. There you go. And then center it screen, if you wouldn't mind. Look at him. Yeah. I mean, it's, you guys got, see it's, it's obviously, look at this, you can see the skeletal rib cage or, or whatever that is, it's a spinal area. It looks like a frog, almost a frogman body, but it's got this huge elongated head setting in the center of the cranium. And I've heard L.A. Marzulli talk about that, that, you know, that the human one sets at the back of your cranium of your head and the alien ones, the hybrid ones, they, they set in the center. It looks like a lizard looking face. This is a, this is a creature. Why would you make yeah, something look like that? Why would you even build something or have something like that fashioned except you knew they existed well and again the thing is understand and and i'm only seeing uh, because i'm on split screen but the the viewers are actually seeing the whole alien not just i'm only seeing yeah like they see the whole thing on the main screen okay yeah. and then if they look look to the right that panel okay yeah. which is interesting you'll see the creatures very similar with the screen now these are not the same skulls that 
L.A. Marzulli and uh, Brian Forrester and the others have found, which, which are you know basically called the Paracas skulls. Just right, those are out of Peru. Yeah, Marzulli yeah, skulls yeah. are out of Peru. This is Mexico. This is the Aztec. This is going back be maybe before the Aztec Indians. Oh, I mean. this is before the Aztecs. There's two periods. The one on the left, okay, the, the one on the right it was is where the Aztecs tell the story that the ones on the left, the one on the left, the exoskeleton I think, uh, Steven Spielberg's Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skulls was a more accurate portrayal. There's a whole story behind that too. Grab, uh, bro, uh, grab uh, that uh, one, do yeah. a quick grab of it and come back to us again with it uh, yeah. in the center. So uh, I think it's, re yeah, I think it's really important, but here's, here's the thing, Paul, that, that I want people to understand. Why we're excited is the official government narrative of the world has all been to contain the truth until the times of the Antichrist when he comes on and claims the aliens created us. The bottom line in all this is to have God's people alerted to the greatest deception in history that's coming. And again, when you control the narrative, you control the facts. I will tell you this, that the greatest cover up and cover over of history starts with the Smithsonian Institute, okay? And what a lot of people need to understand is they have one of the most sophisticated genetic labs in the world. I'm talking about which go see when you go to the Smithsonian DC. I'm talking about their secret warehouse laboratory complexes. In this coming webinar, you will hear for about, I think over 60 minutes, maybe 70 minutes, uh, the story of a man who was an eyewitness to this, who was in relationship, oh, thank you, Brock, and keep that up, was in relationship to one of the most famous geologists in the world that would take graduate students down the Grand Canyon. And what's fascinating is all of the stories that you know are denied by uh, Snopes or skepticalscientist.com, those are all controlled by the same people that control everything else. So this alien creature that you're seeing right now, and I, I'm assuming that's on screen, yes. is basically shown being excavated at eight feet uh right now you know the the in the in the time period between six to eight thousand years bc the reason why there's a there's a creature variation that even took place if you would even a more genetically disgusting thing than this but this is pulled out of a flying saucer this creature sitting in a flying saucer it's unearthed. In other words, the creature comes out first, then the saucer comes out. And there's enough dirt to satisfy any skeptic. We don't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, going to the desert. And what my guy Jesse did, who's the uh, my antiquity uh, director for Gen Six, is he separated Pastor the locating team from the digging team, so there could be nobody pulling something out of their shirt and planting it in, okay? Right, right. In order to establish that, we had our ground-based cameras and our drone overhead to prove that we found this site. And quite candidly, I mean, what these guys went through was, uh, I think we, I don't know, we have 14, 16 guys digging off and on because we had to have the provenance, which is a not fancy word for authenticity, established. So now, what, where is, why is this important at this time in history? Because the Word of God says that there's nothing that's been hidden that isn't going to be made Amen. known and revealed. Amen. Amen. And it's important that people understand that we're watching the Genesis 6-4 uh, narrative, both before the flood of Noah and after the flood of Noah, taking place right now in the laboratories around the world. Flashback to my statement about the Smithsonian, the most sophisticated labs in the world. And if you've got one of everything and you know you can clone one of everything, you can also manipulate anything that is normal and turn it abnormal. Uh, an interesting point, Pastor, is when uh, God brought the animals two by two to the ark, he brought them because yeah. not just any pair of elephants or leopards or tigers or or you know anything that you you, you you believe that and i believe it too it's because if you it because it says in the bible that all flesh had been corrupted in other words mankind yes. and the animals too so god had to be selective to find yes. what you would call righteous animals just like noah and his family were considered righteous because their dna wasn't corrupted that's Absolutely. why he selected that's the, them that's a critical point 
And now since, and I maintain, and I've been told this, since, since we've been doing this stuff, you know, these expeditions have been going on for three years. I want people to understand something. I understand the criticisms that are out there, but I want you to take it to the Lord in prayer. Because if you're watching messenger RNA in the news every day, and you're watching ramifications of black goo coming out of people, you're watching all of the uh, manipulations of the human genome and race-specific bioweapons, then you can understand something. If everything that existed on the planet, and my eyewitness, you will hear the eyewitness make the statement, he was told by the Smithsonian guy who led him around, you'll hear the story behind it, it's miraculous, we have one of everything ever known to exist on the earth. The amount, and he was showing giant skeletons in the, in the Smithsonian, uh, I guess you'd say, keeper of the secrets. And by the way, this is just one of the underground, if you will, vaulted uh, uh, repositories for um, just so much stuff. You can't fit everything in one 1.5 million uh, uh, foot building. You got to have like 10 of them. Right. And then the, the story of this is, is seriously, uh, it's shaken, it's stirred, and that's going to shake a lot of people up. I mean, when, now, you first, when you first saw this stuff, and I'm sitting here, you're talking about mutating of DNA, and you have an article here you sent me, Chile approves a law to protect employment rights of mutants and genetically modified humans. Now, why in the world would you have to have a law to protect mutants or genetically modified humans, except you plan on modifying humans and or you already know there are mutant uh, entities on this planet. I mean, why would you do this, Steve? Well, you, did, you got it. You nailed it. And, uh, you know, nice thing about doing uh, shows together is that's the, that's the bottom line. I love it. Now, Chile has an interesting uh, genetic composition of their uh, cloud people, and there's different ethnicities. This is what I want people to understand. There's different ethnicities of the giant mutants, okay? And they're not all giants, but giants and or mutants. In other words, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Right. Because there's so much ancient manipulation. And, and I guess the bombshell for today that people got to understand, we have irrefutable proof it will be challenged but i can even tell you i've got scientists working on the genetic formula that's portrayed in all these things some of these and here this will blow your mind some of these artifacts are absolutely when you look at them under uv light they're fluorescent now why is what? that critical yeah fluorescent, fluorescent. yeah now i'll <laughs> tell you what's fascinating what you're seeing you brought it up it was serpentine a serpent like and the serpent the snake is venerated through all because in essence that's been the sign of the uh, uh, uh satan yeah, even right. in the garden bipedal but here's what's interesting reptiles have ultraviolet sensitivity in their eyes so these things and what's i mean this is a pretty big put that deal. thing up there again brock because then we got to show that again I mean, you're saying that yeah. some of the artifacts, and, you'll, and folks, you'll be able to see all of this stuff when you watch the webinar. It's July the 30th, and then you see it at the bottom of the screen. Brock's been flashing for you uh, how to get your ticket. This is an absolute, everybody has to get their ticket for this webinar. Look at this thing right here, okay? Um, there's that serpent-looking alien with wings. I mean, you talk about a fallen angel or a fallen entity or, or, or an alien entity that takes on a serpent body. This is, and look, and you've got planets. I see the planet Saturn, and there's some other planets in there. How did they know right. about Saturn, Steve? How did they know about well, Saturn? They, well, they came from there, and I want to share something. It's interesting that Saturn is the preeminent. Now, if they look at the very top of the screen image, and thanks for leaving it on, you'll see the wings on the tip of the point of that yes. arrow or spear. Or, you know, take a look at this is what the symbol is saying. Yes. That's Egyptian iconography that was taken from the fallen angels to always establish that they were the gods, little g, that came from heaven to earth. The Anunnaki, and this is, I want to make this clear. The Anunnaki is a substitutionary, and I would say this, uh, 
deception because the purpose of the Smithsonian, the U.S. military, everybody covering up everything until now, all hail the power of Jesus' name, was to be able to mislead the entire human race with the Prometheus uh, uh, doctrine that we were created by aliens. Right. If you understood, and I understood, the degree of genetic manipulation of all creation, which you laid out, don't have to go back to that, and you understand that Noah was perfect in his generations, what you're going to see in the webinar is, I'm telling you, it's mind-blowing stuff. First of all, the aliens taught human beings how to sacrifice human beings. You go to the book of Enoch, and it talks about they taught the fallen angels how to, uh, women to abort their children. Oh, Lord. Yeah, and so, and, and some of the stuff is too gruesome. I'm not going to talk about it. But I can tell you this, that the pyramid structure, now here's what's wild, and we have pre-Adamic, prior to the creation of Adam, fallen angel uh, glyphs and graphs and imagery and showing the fallen angels building the pyramids, okay? And for the record, ladies and gentlemen... You have standard, it in this webinar? You guys got artifacts yes, that show yep. that? Yes. Wow! See, folks, listen yep. to this. We're not just talking about Egyptology. We're not just talking about the pharaohs. We're talking about the pharaohs tied to the Aztec Indians, tied to the fallen angels, tied to the alien entities, and they're not showing up in just one location now. Now you're starting to see all the... This is like the missing piece of the puzzle. Oh, uh, if this was Darwinism, this is the missing link. But uh, unfortunately, Darwinism is a lie. Uh, there's no... This, the Bible's true. This is the missing piece that ties the Bible narrative, Steve. And I got to tell you something, Pastor. What's interesting is that so much ancillary data now is coming up because when people who watch your program both the people who love god and the people that hate us who don't love god the bottom line is is that they have to accelerate their time frame this is a good example of jesus giving his disciples uh, an instruction and when we go we go when we plant the truth Amen. but the devil comes behind us so when jesus said get thee behind me satan he's saying follow after me and so ladies and gentlemen Obviously, I'm excited because, again, this I'm not pitching a book. This isn't even published anymore. Genetic Armageddon, Today's Technology, Tomorrow's Monsters. I, I just simply will not write another book. I'll do the videos as long as I'm on planet Earth to share with my brothers and sisters. <laughs> but what was interesting is the amount of advanced scientific information on all these uh, different uh, uh, artifacts, different relics, the... The astonishing thing is, is that you saw briefly in the trailer the base of a pyramid. That pyramid with its uh, capstone is astonishing because it's laying out the plants. Literally, it's a blueprint, and that those would be called angel glyphs. Okay, yeah, the the, the pyramid. Yeah. We also found a, a pyramid that's about 36 inches tall. That's going to be mind blowing. All these things, I I just can't give it all to you, but I'm saying this. I don't believe anyone will not be blessed and informed and encouraged and strengthened in their faith. Because as you know, Pastor, I'm about one thing, yep. lifting up Jesus and the truth. Amen. And the Bible says, the Bible says that men have become lovers of self and lovers of pleasure more than God. Amen. And so the entire world's going to be deceived. And Jesus even asked the question, when he returns, will he find faith in the earth? Steve, I'll tell you what we should do. We should do this. We've got almost 2,000 people here now live. We should play the trailer again. We really should. Okay. Because the crowd has doubled since we've been on. Brock, let's play it again. Folks, it's five minutes. It's going to blow your mind. This is just the trailer. This is just the trailer of the greatest webinar uh, on this subject ever done. We're going to watch it again, and then, then you'll be ready to hear what Steve has to say some more about this. It's incredible. Brock's looking for the trailer. For the first time in more than 50 years, Congress held a hearing on unidentified flying objects. Military leaders now admit there are objects flying around out there that they can't explain. I do not have an explanation for what this 
the object is. Uh, reportedly appear to exhibit unusual flight characteristics, appear to demonstrate advanced technology, and maneuver abruptly or move at considerable speed without discernible means of propulsion. That's pretty intriguing. Videos which add fuel to the belief that we are not alone. <laughs> Defense officials testifying that there were at least 18 cases where they had data from multiple sensors showing objects that moved in ways that could not be explained, adding they would share more details during a closed-door classified setting. How do you prevent leaks of potentially classified videos or other material? We will have a, uh, a process for classified and compartment holdings, and we will find a way of getting positive control over those. So no bombshell evidence or any real answers today. The aerial phenomena observed in these videos, they say, remain characterized as unidentified. Despite a 1,500-page report on UFOs released in 2021, the bona fide history about alien interaction with mankind is still being hidden. Gen 6 Productions has embarked on one of the most ambitious archaeological expeditions in history. Searching for evidence of alien interactions dating back to the peak of ancient Egyptian and Aztec civilizations. This is quarry stone. So this gives us a clear indication this is not recent. Within the layers of the untouched Mexican soil, lie stunning ancient alien artifacts and evidence of historical relationships that governments around the world would rather have hidden. There's a lot of uh, National Guard patrolling the area and what we don't want to do is get any unwanted attention from anybody. The question is, why are they covering up these connections? Using advanced ground penetrating radar and documenting on film every step of the way, our team establishes provenance and uncovers the undeniable truth it's a pyramid, bro. of direct interaction between ancient Egyptians, Aztecs, elongated skull, and aliens. Straight alien with an exoskeleton. The precursor to the Aztecs were the Toltecs who occupied the basin of Mexico for thousands of years. Gen 6's newest expedition concentrates on the Tula region of Mexico around the area of the Toltecs buried ancient temple. 75% of the Toltec capital is still beneath the ground. Some of the artifacts found by our team are thousands of years old. This is a direct contradiction to the public narrative. We have 11 different types of geopenetrating radars to complement each other. That way nothing is missed. Not only have the authorities, politicians, and scientists known about this Egyptian connection to the Aztecs and aliens, but they have gone out of their way to cover up this information. I mean, it's definitely Egyptian iconography, that's for sure. Let's keep going. What could be their reasoning for withholding these facts? And why would institutions like the Smithsonian be so interested in collecting and hiding tens of thousands of artifacts? The mind-blowing Egyptian alien connections in the Americas will expose the greatest cover-up of true ancient history. Unbelievable, folks. I mean, absolutely unbelievable. The great Steve Quayle is with us today, and without question, this is confirmation of the Bible in Genesis chapter 6. Steve, I mean, even when I, every time I watch that trailer, I just want to watch it again. So what will the webinar, I mean, what are you going to do to help us? Are you going to unveil it all? 
Is it all? Hey, we're going to unveil. We're going to unveil. I would say the majority of the latest dig, some of the previous digs that people haven't seen. And when when the people sign up for this webinar, which is different than when the one we did a year prior, what's going to happen, Paul? Everybody's going to get an update, monthly update. So the the theme of our expedition is a con, uh, it continues. And I want to share something, ladies and gentlemen. One of the things that is is critical is when Jesus said we would know the truth and the truth would set us free. Amen. There are a lot of people are in bondage to the false narrative of history, covering up the glory of God, covering up his marvelous creation. The devil's out to destroy everything, just like Pastor said. All flesh, insect, animal. That's what is going on. That's why the stuff in the Smithsonian is the most guarded secrets in the world. And Pastor, I just sent you something about what was discovered in King Kate's cave in the Grand Canyon. I don't know if you've got it into your inbox. No. But to make a long story short, in 1909, the Phoenix Gazette published a shocking article in which a, a specific uh, oh, uh, archaeologist slash geologist, really, named Kincaid, found Egyptian citadels in the Grand Canyon. They've all dismissed it at hoax, but in 1909, the Phoenix Gazette was owned by the Webb family, W-E-B-B. And just recently, someone came forward out of the Smithsonian and said, they will deny until the day they are exposed openly that Kincaid was real. There's no records. Here's the Kincaid story. This is important that people understand this. The, the latest information from someone who comes forward, and I don't know their names, I'm not playing dumb, but I operate on a, on a basis. I'm about the intel, not about who's doing it, and I can always compare it, okay? So if somebody claims they have secret information, I can, I, I keep things, uh, what would I say, well, hidden, that I can compare it against, and, and the amount of two or three witnesses. So I don't offer information, I wait for their information to compare it. And after being at this for 50 years, I got a pretty good database in my brain. <laughs> I just want yeah. to keep it that way. But Amazing. the entire cover-up of the Kincaid expedition and his journal, along with tens of thousands of artifacts that the Smithsonian says, number one, this guy never existed. No, there's no such artifacts. And oh, by the way, there's no giant skulls in the Smithsonian, even though I documented, I believe, in excess of 300 or 400 old newspaper articles of unearthing giants in the uh, mound area, the Ohio River Valley, Illinois, uh, all of the, the finds that were out of place artifacts, which are called OOPARTS, O-O-P-A-R-T-S, they all go to the Smithsonian. Unfortunately, Smithsonian says, we don't know anything about it. What? Well, yes, yeah, oh, yes, yeah. they do. <laughs> yeah, they do. And let's just say this, the Pentagram, the Pentagon, and even the Smithsonian share one thing in common, that's five levels or five sides. So this is, there are military generals that don't have access to information that people are getting. There are, and isn't it interesting? They hate the truth, they hate yep. Jesus, but I believe, Pastor, God himself is laying out the evidence of why judgment is already upon the United States of America, and the evil people are doing it. I get mad when I think my little brothers and sisters being butchered, and I can take people right to the point in history and show them after the creation of Adam and Eve, who taught them to do that? And see, Satan wanted to start Lucifer before the fall, Satan after. And by the way, his worshipers call him Lord Lucifer. And the entire Luciferian, if you will, control of the world is, is not contested because Jesus didn't argue with the no. devil when the devil offered him all the kings of the world. But it's within the power of God's people to know the truth. And also, and, and Steve, this, also, Steve, yes. We know that the fallen angels also took on bodily forms. The, the, obviously, the serpent in the garden, the, the fallen ones that, 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 uh, in Genesis chapter 6 that then impregnated women on earth, creating these Nephilim, okay, these giants in the land. They were, uh, so why should we be shocked that this alien exoskeletal demonic forms and alien uh, beings would be present on the earth. The, Satan, Lucifer is the god of this world. Why would we be shocked by it? 
And if it, if, and here's another thing, why would the Smithsonian Institute and all of the powers that be be so hell bent on hiding it if it wasn't true? That they are scared of the truth. Well, the whole world lies in the evil one. And I, I was praying about that one time, and I really, you know, it was troubling me. I was going, God, is there not one bastion of, of, of a, a little bit of truth? He said to me, he actually asked me this question. And I mean, this is what he asked. And I thought that only God would ask a question like that. What don't you understand about the word whole, Steve, W-H-O-L-E? And, you know, it slapped me on the side of the face. And, and this, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the biggest false narrative that's destroyed. I'm, I, I'm saying this, the official amount of people destroyed by mutagenic injections and uh, uh, the genetic tampering with human DNA I'm guessing in somewhere in the 50 to 100 million worldwide. Wow. So, yeah. so if, if people are so willingly to do that, to yield to unproven science, then you understand there's no hunger for the truth. There's no discourse loud. There's no uh, get scientists from two. There's no longer any true science. There's only controlled narrative. And I think this is what people we serve, the greatest king of kings and lord of lords his name is jesus and the war that's playing out in the heavens right now it's critical and, and somebody said with all the stuff you know steve how do you sleep and i was said i don't sleep much anyway but i said if i didn't know jesus i couldn't even deal with the amen. ramifications amen I'm, and, and paul this is something people need to understand and, and boy hear my heart on this brothers and sisters the context of time and events that have gone on when, and, and some of the most horrific battles, wars, gruesome stuff, all that stuff. And Jesus said, there's never been a time like it or would be again as Amen. what's coming upon the earth. And it's like this. We have a little understanding about the difference or the, between my fingers. And we're in a whole room that's going to come coming in on us and crashing in on us. I'm believing that this time for the release of this information is to set the people of God free. And I don't care if 500 people decide they want to go jump off a cliff, you know. I'm not going to follow no. them. And the whole world and all of the narratives. By the way, this was presented. My findings have been I can't say that. My findings have been presented uh, of our expedition to uh, some pretty powerful people in the mainstream media. I won't name names. Some conservative. Guess what? They were told, you don't touch this stuff with the 10-foot pole. All the media is going to... So when you see the UAP, the, the congressional hearings, yeah. gentlemen, it's that's smoke. like somebody said, that's a nothing burger with make-believe ketchup and make-believe pickles and, and no mustard. Imitation and cheese. There, there's yeah. <laughs> there's two, two million files between Defense Intelligence, the Pentagon, and, um, oh, good night, CIA. So, uh, so NSA, you're NSA, saying, what so what the media is doing in, in, yes. and they're incomplicit with the Pentagon report in Congress is nothing more, when they keep talking about disclosure, really what this is is disinformation. They are not disclosing anything. You're disclosing the truth, Steve. And there's not a journalist worth his salt in the bread that would not want to cover this story. You're not a journalist if you don't want to cover this story. You're absolutely insane. So let me, so that's why you're here. I, we'll cover it. I'm not even considered a journalist, although I think I am. And, and these people out there, they're afraid of the truth. Steve, let me just say something. There's some people who are asking questions. I'm looking at the chat room right now. I'm looking at the comments. Sure. They're saying, Steve, are these things coming back in our lifetime or in before Christ comes? Uh, can you help us answer? Yes. That? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And you made a statement that you, you answered that question, even with a statement you made a couple of minutes ago. Ladies and gentlemen, they walk among us. If you ever hear me use a word that I say hybrid, that means that person, the entity, is not 100% human. We're told in the Word of God, are we not, Pastor, that even Satan can present himself or his messengers yep, as, as angels, the angels of, of light. light. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, the whole Anunnaki story, Zechariah Sitchin, I'm aware of him. Right. I've read all his works. In one of our videos we did, Holocaust of Giants, one of his best friends, a billionaire in Italy, told the story that Zechariah related to him that an Anunnaki, fallen angel, would show up on his bed and tell him what to write and tell him what to say. 
Anunnaki again, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is something that people have got to understand. Isn't it interesting too, Pastor? What we're up upheavaling or upturning, unearthing, and the upheaval that's going to come from it, that's what I'm trying to say, is showing the absolute degeneracy of the fallen angels and their hatred, hatred for the, for the things of God. By the way, Amen. there is no, and, and I, I see somebody there, uh, one of your uh, viewers, our viewers at this point, uh, saying they're all puppets. Yes, they are, but they're deadly puppets. They're deadly, thank I you. I want people to understand that. They're deadly puppets. Yep. And and when you've got, you know, these, these people make Chucky the puppet look like, a, you know, a benevolent uh, marionette. The point is, is that <laughs> we're walking right now into, I believe, the God of heaven is laying out the evidence for the hatred of those who claim to worship him, claim to serve him, and have gone along to get along. And I, I don't know about you, Pastor, but my Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. Exactly. Exactly. It, and you're yeah, exactly and, and, right. Folks, you, there and, it is. Look at, right, look at the ticker. HagmanReport.com. You want to go to the Hagman Report. You want to go there at that his website. You want to get your ticket. You go there, and that's how you purchase your ticket for the webinar. Am I right, Steve? That's how they get it. Yes, yes, sir. Because Doug, Doug is helping you in this collaboration. Um, you know, and I mean, he's, he had that dagger that's blowing my mind. I had him on my last webinar where he had that dagger, and that dagger had on it ancient fallen angel uh, um, symbols and glyphs. Right, that you have, uh, that's confirmed what you've been discussing. Uh, uncovering in Mexico, uh, it's or tied into some other other glyphs that have been found around the world. Is that right? Right. Concurrently with this, ladies and gentlemen, and I, I you know, I can only say this: I challenge my uh, the critics, and there's plenty of them, to stand up and put their money where their mouth is, because <laughs> again, the thing that's really impressing uh, on my spirit right now is no one else in the history of the world, and I believe only. Uh, could it be important at this time? Took on the project to take 500,000 plus or minus 10,000 symbols. Every character, Chinese, depending on who's, who's telling you the number, China, their own written language has 100,000 plus characters, okay? Uh, all of the things from all of the ancient Sanskrit, Indian. We took on Sumerian. By the way, I'm not a linguist. I'm not anything. I'm just the guy that it's my project, and the people that have come, pastor people all over the world who are men of renown and scientists, who I have to protect because, you know, one of them, one of them is still getting in out of the hospital who they tried to murder. And this is a real story. So these people volunteered, and, and you know, paying them a million dollars a year wouldn't be enough, and they volunteered their time because they said, the Lord said, I'm to help you in this. And I, I don't talk to them direct. I want to make it clear. If I've learned anything, it's I want the safety of the people that are true. And that's why I'm saying, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest project of, a, of, of its kind, NSA didn't. They probably do now because obviously they're grabbing our stuff. But no one ever took the time or spent the money to look at every single rock carving, petroglyph known, uh, every single language, every single symbol for languages. And one of the most interesting things is even on the uh, Siri Skimwalker Ranch, they're talking about the spiral. The spiral is one of the oldest rock carvings in the world, and it indicates basically a, a portal or a stargate. Right. So what we've done, Pastor, and I, I want people to understand this. There are some things I won't release because they're just too sickening and disgusting. And I cover my eyes with the blood of Jesus. I cover my mind, and I believe in spiritual warfare. But what I'm trying to tell people is they're already here. The aliens are here. They've been polluting. They have their race. They have their progeny. They have their high fives when they greet each other. And Hollywood's touched on that. Even wow. the, the show They Live with Rowdy Roddy Piper, who's gone you know, now. But the bottom line is, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's that's... It's that real. And yeah. isn't it interesting? The kings of the earth are going to give their power unto the beast. Yes. What makes any of us think that the people we see as big-time politicals are all human? Because, again, remember, 
when you have a genetic tampering, a genetic manipulation, you are able to insert specific instructions into the hybrid genome and basically articulate some things and shut off some other things. In essence, we've got, they walk among us now. But woe unto you inhabits the earth. The you know, in Revelation, says, says Stephen, in Revelation, folks, chapter 16, it tells you John the Revelator sees three unclean spirits come out of the mouth of the dragon, which would be Lucifer, out of the mouth of the beast, which is the false prophet, and out of the mouth, I mean, of, of the Antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. He said they look like frogs. Brock, you get that picture again? That, 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 <laughs> that. Right. That exoskeleton-looking well, demon. I mean, look at this thing. It's, uh, this is probably what John the Revelator saw coming out of the mouth of Lucifer, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. Something like that. Some creature looking unclean, ungodly, looking weird, mutant, manipulated, demonically charged alien that was probably what he saw, something very similar to this, that, and it isn't the first time that these things have been seen or written about in ancient texts as well as in the Bible. What Steve Quayle and his team is doing there at Gen 6 is bringing forward in a real time, right now, real word from God to wake up the masses to the realization that we are in the last days and that Jesus Christ is going to return and that this, it's going to get woe, as you said, Steve, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Apollyon's going to come out of the pit. There's a lot of stuff we haven't seen yet that's going to be released. And some of it's already out here. I think some of it's already out here, as you said earlier. Walking yes, it's, it's already here. And yeah. it's going to even become more problematic. Now, again, I, I have challenged anybody from the Smithsonian that wants to come and debate me or any four-star general, and there's a reason I'm saying that because I don't want to deal with anybody who says that's above my pay grade. This isn't out of arrogance, but they can't, they won't do it. And for the record, Pastor, there's stuff in the Smithsonian in their secret vaults that even the military doesn't know exist because right. Satan is at war in his house too. Fallen angels fight for their position. Yes, they do. And so what's, what's interesting is this, is that the whole point of everything that has uh, come to pass, Jesse loves Jesus. Daniel Holdings loves Jesus. Uh, my science guy, these men are men who are dedicated to the Lord above all and beyond all. And when they're, you know, lying in a hospital, one of them for seven months, because they tried to hit him and kill him, and God's keeping him alive, and, and others around the world that are running for their lives. These are, these are preeminent scientists. Amen. And who wouldn't, I, I can tell you one guy, I'll tell you this, a very famous president uh, whose son was uh, also a president, uh, made a certain guy know an offer. And that man said, I would not sell out my God. Uh, somebody in the room said, uh, do you understand what we can do to you? And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, you cannot do anything to me because I have not been given into your hands. Amen. That blows my mind because name, date, place is everything. And I want to share something, ladies and gentlemen. What's gone on in the White House, the fact that even Roger Stone, who's a political guy, I don't know Roger, right. I just know his name, basically said there's a portal over the White House, a portal, a stargate. <laughs> and he, you can look it up. I know. He's not kidding. No, he's I know not he's not. Kidding. No, he's not. Yeah, and, and there's portals all over the planet. And here's the thing. They're becoming active. And, and I had a friend, an American elder, who's passed away that I wanted to have on the seminar. But Cliff Mahoudi was there when the military was excavating giant Egyptian mummies out of the Grand Canyon. So what you're going to see on, on uh, and Cliff, I have him on, you, we have a, a DVD called Holocaust of Giants that he's on. And uh, like I said, unfortunately, he's passed away. But the entire narrative of ancient history is a lie. 
The Bible is the truth. And Amen. here's the reason for evolution. Here's the reason for Prometheus that the aliens created us to take away from God. The devil's hatred towards God, and especially Jesus, is so great. Amen. And you know, Pastor, you know, thank you for what you do because the Lord is calling out to his people. Who is going to stand in the gap? Amen. Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Well, quite candidly, not very many. No. Now they they they'll want to compromise with the workers of iniquity. Well, what about my this? What about my that? I said, what about your soul? I said, you want to be a smart virgin or a dumb virgin? You know? <laughs> I said, you got you got a real simple. You got to figure there. it out. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You figure it out. And <laughs> you know what's interesting too is the fact that all of antiquity, and I'm talking ancient times, both pre-Adamic. There's a lot of people. I don't believe in that gap theory. Fine. But I tell you this, that there's a Manetto's Table of Kings, Egyptian, that basically says that the kingship went back 450,000 years before man even appeared on earth. And they talk about the judgment of God destroying the earth that was. Why is Genesis talk about replenish? Why, does, why do we see a chaotic earth, you know, in the first chapter of Genesis, but then you go to the book of Isaiah and says God did not create the world tohu and bohu but it became that way yeah and so we're in a war brother and you know this and the people of god have got to understand it we have to go by knowing the word of god praying and hearing the voice of god and i'm telling everybody that number one thank you for those of you who pray for pastor paul pray for me pray for yes. that which god has laid before us pray for our safety Pray for just the ability to yes. stay on the air. And yes. I want people to understand these, these, and we raise the money through the fundraisers to fund these expeditions. And, and I, I just can't explain how, you know, when you start getting into the seven figures, that's millions, uh, that it becomes astonishing to me at how much money your enemies have that they're using against you. Yeah. And all I can say is God isn't dependent upon money, but I share I'm grateful. And I don't ask anybody for anything. I just say, look, join this webinar, you yep. will get. And here's what they get. They get the 120, I'm sorry, 120, 200 page PDF, that's imagery. And by the way, we've got 27, 27 different alien species that we've discovered that we can prove the, you know, the statuary. We've got Oh, good night. Uh, so many different flying saucers, so many different craft. And on the craft, it designates, and that's how knowing the glyph project. And, you know, isn't it so cool to God? You've got the left hand and the right hand. And go, I didn't know back then when I started the glyph project that this thing would be coming up with the glyphs. And we can literally read the people. The fallen angels have one unique characteristic they brag about who they are and, and the reason you can power. say this is because you t i think you were going to say this earlier you took all of the ancient writings that are known in the world or, and it was and they were put in a, a super uh powered uh artificial a computer computer yeah, super computer that could decode everything and could come up with what the fallen angels language is and, uh, and that language, folks, is found in these archaeological digs in Mexico. Steve Quayle's done it. I, I can't say enough. It's all backing the Bible. It's proved the Word of God is true. I did not come from a monkey, and I did not come from an alien. We were created in the image and likeness of God, and that's what you're proving, Steve. And everybody should watch Absolutely. this Absolutely. Everybody. Watch and this I want to say something. Yeah. I want to say something that I think the aliens created us and, you know, I, I saw a comment, Anunnaki, you know, well, here's the deal. When you see creatures, and I want to share something, there's not one creature or alien species that we've turned up that you would want to take home to your mother or Mary, okay, or, <laughs> yeah, right. or vice versa. Right. God made everything beautiful. Amen. And, and this is, and, and when God created, in Gen I get excited, Pastor, when God created in Genesis, he saw it and saw it was good. He saw the beauty. He saw the blessing. Amen. He saw of what he was giving to mankind. I guarantee you, you take that creature and put it up against, you know, whoever you think is the most beautiful woman in the world. Uh, let's say Helen of Troy. You take the, those ugly entities and put them up against Michelangelo's David, the sculptor, or the most handsome man, ladies, or the most beautiful women, men. I guarantee you, like produces like. 
you know, and those things didn't come from the God who decks the heavens with all the glory of splendor of everything from spiral galaxies and stars and nebulas and everything and and the beauty of every single thing you know beauty speaks for itself and ugliness speaks to its creator wow and that ugly creator is satan amen lucifer amen folks steve quail Steve, we appreciate you coming on today. This has been this has been amazing. It really, really has. And everybody, his webinar is July 30th. And he will be this will be phenomenal. I've asked Steve if he'll join me at later in the year, uh, later next month in, in August 26th to help bring us more. By then he'll probably have more info. He can add to it. Boy, you want to get this webinar July 30th. There it is at the Hagman Report. Go there, get, I know I am, I'm going to be watching. I want to know everything there is that they found because this is finally, finally, you know, it's, everybody else has been working very hard to get us to this point. Steve certainly has led the way, but now the truth is being revealed. And so Steve, I can't thank you enough. I really can't for coming on. The picture you gave us to show, Brock, that you showed, that's the first time anyone's ever seen that. Steve, yes, sir. Steve, open, Steve, let that be revealed on this show today. And uh, just that one picture is, 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 is worth a thousand words. And think about what all, all these different artifacts you're going to see at the webinar. Uh, it's going to be incredible, Steve. It really is, isn't it? It will be incredible. And again, the webinar people will see it and they'll be the only ones to see it all in the context. Because here's the deal. I feel that people that support uh, myself, you, Pastor, uh, Doug Hagman, I believe that they are sowing into what we're doing and they should be the ones to reap the fruit of it. And I tell people, you're not viewing history, you're joining with us in the revealing of the hidden history. Amen. And you know, and this isn't a pep talk, I, I'm not a sports guy, so <laughs> I'm not Oh, Although I'm wearing my coats. I'm wearing a cold Yeah, yeah, I day. understand that. You know, I, I would wear something probably uh, in no way related to sports. But the bottom line is, is that we have the opportunity. And like I say, once the narrative, and we're forcing the narrative, you guys, that's what I want you to understand. Time is being sped up. We're told in the Word of God that's being done by God himself in order to preserve the elect. If God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, people get mad when I quote the scripture. I said, that's what God's saying about his people. And he also says the children of this world are in their generations more wiser than the children of light. That Amen. shouldn't be the case. So anyway, you know, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in to yep. this live broadcast. And thank you for coming on board with us with the seminar, because I can tell you, I've been at this for 50 years. I got saved 50 years ago. I know I don't look, you know, I, I kid <laughs> I look a day. I don't look a day over 300, I know. But, but and, and Methuselah gets no challenge. Yeah, he me, doesn't get any challenge. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, thank you so much, Pastor. Yep. And I'm excited. And there will be an ongoing, uh, if you will, email news alert update because people will see how God, God is building this precept upon precept Amen. upon precept. Line and again, line. keep in mind, yeah. keep in mind that the narrative that the is official, it's a lie. It's a diversion. Amen. That's what the word is. Amen. It's a diversion and it ends in perversion. So, Praise you God. know, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Brock. God bless you guys. All right. God bless you, Steve. Thank you so much, brother. Praise the Lord. Steve Quayle, folks. Uh, there's nobody like him. OK, there's nobody like him. Uh, you know, thank God for him because he's really is the pioneer paving the way. L.A. Marzulli coming in there as well when he wrote his trilogy on the Nephilim. And then you had guys like Timothy Alvarino and some of the other, uh, you know, Chuck Misler was out there too, but he was out ahead of his time. And some of the others that have, uh, have been involved in helping, P and Doug Hagman now, and, d and different ones, piecing together. And, and Mike around the world who has shared some great information for us, but Steve Quayle, Steve Quayle, he is the expert in this area, and this will be the best webinar it could ever be done. Forget about, forget about ancient aliens. I mean, he's going to blow them out of the water because it isn't going to be, and what if, and, and so, let's suppose, and if that's true, then how about this? No, that's ancient alien. This is different. This is, here it is. Here's what it looks like. Here's what they made. 
This was 6,000 years ago. And oh, by the way, here's what the Bible said was crawling around the earth. And guess who did it? Lucifer and his minions. And this is the, what the manifestation of that looks like. And oh, by the way, that thing is coming back. And that's right. The devil, I, I, that's why I'm writing the book. You guys know it. I'm writing a book, Revelation 9 11. I'm going to expose the darkness of Apollyon, but it's not just him. It's the demons he releases. And you're starting to get a glimpse of them. And they've been around a long time. The Egyptians tapped into them. They worshiped them. They worshiped the god Ra. They array. They built their pyramids to, to, in, to get the technological power. Enoch told you that these fallen entities taught men how to make weapons, taught men scientific uh, alchemine taught men to perversion and diversion, taught men military strategies, taught men all kinds of different uh, uh, technologies that you see being used today uh, has been coming along the line. And so thank God uh, that uh, Steve Quayle is out there on the front lines. But let me say something more importantly than all of that. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ. For revealing, because Jesus said that which is done in secret will be shouted from the housetop. That which is born in, born in secret, that which is done in secret will be shouted from the housetop. I'm going to get a song. There's over 2,200 or 2,300 people here right now. Some of you are not saved. This could be the day the Lord changes your life. You don't think it's true? We've been here for 12 years telling you that the Bible's true, that the word of God is true. Jesus is coming back. The demons are crawling out. The Nephilim are coming. The, 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 the alien, uh, uh, demonic looking frogmen entities of Satan. Hell itself is showing its head. It's desperate to stop the church, but Jesus Christ is coming. I'm going to get a song right now. I want you to come to Jesus right now. I'm going to play this song. Before it's too late, folks, you need to get saved. Everybody talks to God. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to play it again. <laughs> that was the track. I, I want to... I wanna... I don't want to be the guy that sings it at this moment. Uh, where did it go? If you want to be saved, just type right now. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. Don't wait. Uh, make sure you give your life to Jesus Christ. Don't, don't wait till it's too late. Too many people are going to wait too long. They're going to wait too late. They're going to miss heaven. They're going to let the devil uh, rob them of the joy of salvation. That is not what you want to have happen to you. That is not God's plan for you. In Jesus' name. I hope I don't have to sing. He was saying grace over a Tuesday blue plate special When the man in the next booth said Don't you watch TV Don't you know that God's a myth I hate to see you waste your breath There ain't no use in you talking To a ghost that don't exist The praying man said amen And looked up from his plate and said, you may not talk to God right now, but there's gonna come a day. If you're a farmer in the field, praying for the rain, or you curse him at the gravesite, cause he called a loved one's name. You can thank him, you can blame him, either way you're gonna face him. Whether you believe in him or not In the end Everybody talks to God Just type, I want to be saved The man in the blue
Booth went quiet Cause he didn't have a comeback So he shrugged it off and he paid his tab He shuffled out the door And the praying man he prayed For the man who drove away Hoping he would see the light Before it got too late But how was he to know He touched an unbeliever's soul Who got that conversation Two red lights down the road If you're a farmer in the field Praying for the rain Or you curse him at the gravesite Cause he called a loved one's name You can thank him, you can blame him Either way you're gonna face him Whether you believe in him or not In the end Everybody talks to God Everybody talks to God You can thank Him, you can blame Him Either way you're gonna face Him Whether you believe in Him or not Cause in the end Everybody talks to God Everybody talks to God We all talk to God This is your moment I'm going to pray. There's folks here that want to be saved. I want to pray with each and every one of you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. I'm tired of the lies that the devil has been spreading and trying to confuse and to take faith from me and to cause me to not even call upon your name, Lord Jesus. But every lie the devil's ever told is being exposed in these last days. And your word will re- we'll go forth and accomplish where you send it, Lord. It won't return void. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God. I'm asking you, Jesus, to forgive me and to wash me in your precious blood. I believe that Yeshua is the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of Kings. I believe Christ died on the cross for the sins of the world. I believe he rose from the dead and I believe he ascended into heaven and I believe he's coming back again soon and very soon and I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus. Precious name. Are you serious? Are you serious? Welcome to the family. You are a child of God. I've got a song for you. Are you serious? He was, they've been digging up artifacts In Mexico, they've been digging up demons. Well, how about when the bones, when God brazes the bones, will you be ready? Give me some volume, Brock. Saturday was silent and surely it was through 
Since when has impossible ever stopped you? And Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of a dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Time soon Your resurrection power It runs in my veins too I believe there's another miracle, miracle here in this room This is the sound of dry bones rattling This is the praise make a dead man walk again Open the graves are coming Save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to. Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elisha if there's anything that he can do. Just ask the stone that was rolled at the tomb.
yes. Truly, it is an awesome song, Rattle, and it's on our brand new album, Harmonize and Prophesy. You can order your copy of our brand new album right now. You go to our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's paulbegleyprophecy.com. If we're going to lift an offering right now, if you'd like to give, please do that. We need to continue to put great programming out for you, and we need to continue to push forward. As you heard Steve say, that I'm tired of the devil outspending us and out trying to gun us. I'm tired of it. We have, the Bible says that the Lord said, I'll supply every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So thank you guys for being uh, faithful and for your faithful tithing and offerings unto the work of the Lord. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. He will bless you, believe me. And if you want to get a ticket for the webinar coming up that we're having, it's going to be on aliens and the fallen angels. And Doug, uh, uh, excuse me, Steve Quayle, who you saw today, will be speaking in that, giving you the rest of the story. So he's going to, his webinar is going to be amazing. Then he's going to come on ours. He'll be, be a month later because our, his is July 30th. Ours is August 26th. And he will be with us and he'll be showing more and explaining more. Now, and so will uh, not only uh, Steve Quayle, but so will L.A. Marzulli. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, Marshall Masters. We'll have Stephen Ben Danoon. Uh, we'll have Mike from around the world. We'll have Rex Bear. I'll be speaking and my son Bart Begley's film on aliens and fallen angels. And so it's going to be a great, great webinar. That's coming up August 26th. You can get your tickets right now at Eventbrite. Maybe somebody in the chat room will throw it up there real fast and Brock can grab it just before we let everybody go. Uh, it's at Eventbrite. You can get your tickets. It's soon you'll be able to buy the tickets at our, or get your tickets purchased at our website very, very soon. But right now you can get it at Eventbrite. Brock, I don't, it's somewhere it's in there, Brock. Do, 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 do. I'm trying to see it and I don't know. There it is. Good job, Brock. There it is. Go to Eventbrite slash E slash aliens dash and dash fallen as dash and take it. There it is. Okay. There it is. Go to Eventbrite and get your ticket today for our webinar coming up August 26th. All right. Guys, I'll be back at four o'clock with another interview. We're really going to take a look at now, now that the interest rates the, has continuing to rise and the hyperinflation's at 9.1, the highest since 1981. And the fact that the, what's the stock market done today, Brock? I don't know. We need to, we need to know. It, it was falling fast right out of the first five minutes. It was down 350 points this morning. And with this news of the hyperinflation, uh, let me see. I might have it on my phone. Do you have a phone on it? What's it say? Yeah, 64. Only 64? So there's been some rebound, huh? No, Amazon's up $2.42. So, okay. All right. Is that the whole market? It's only down 64? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not bad, really. It made, it, made it, made a bounce back. Okay. But we're going to find out what this means for Main Street because as you guys have heard me say, Wall Street is one thing. Main Street is where you and I live. And what does this mean when the gas is around five bucks a gallon and the price of everything is up by 9.1% as an average? This is crazy. So join me live and be a part of the uh, broadcast at 4 p.m. And also tonight I'll be co-hosting with Pastor Melvin Whittington over at uh, www.ffctv.info. That's www.ffctv.info. I'll be co-hosting on the Getting Ready Show at 7 p.m. Eastern. So I've got a busy day. God bless all of you. Amen. I want to thank all my partners for standing with me, for helping us in the mission of leading people to Jesus Christ, for winning souls into the kingdom. Our live broadcast online, we're seeing 25, 30 souls every day accepting Christ as their Savior. And right here on this television broadcast, so many have come to Jesus Christ. We couldn't do it without you, but we can do all things with Christ. So thank you again for being our partners. God bless all of you.